This episode of the Sleepcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary, Ohio, this Thursday, 4 to 7. Again, OLC Shrine Cafeteria, Cary, Thursday, 4 to 7, for some barbecue and bingo. So get your... Get your um, bingo bingo dots ready and your and, and your stomach and your stomach prepared for some good old barbecue from the Mad Canadian. Um, be sure to check out his social media for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad King Barbecue Company or the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, fresh, hand-roast-to-order coffee company. Uh, it is marine-owned. It is veteran owned. Uh, that that is probably understood. Um, all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Uh, they are based out of yes, I said Ohio already, but more specifically Toledo and more specifically uh, yet again uh, Perrysburg. Um, all of their coffees are imported direct from farms in places like Colombia, Brazil. Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far-off lands. You can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going today, everybody? This is the um, this is the Tuesday episode. We get to talk about some chaos little bit of chaos. Just exactly what exactly what our Tuesday's episode is. Ca- collegiate, collegiate chaos. Exactly what happened here. So got a lot to talk about, a lot of chaos to talk about. So let's let's get right into it, Jared. All right. Actually, we haven't even opened this up yet. So let me do that before we get started. Where'd it go? There it is. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Um, as I think I said on the Monday episode, I have no complaints that I will air in public. <laughs> uh, this is the tenth episode of Collegiate Chaos. We have a lot to get to, as there was a lot of chaos this week. So. Uh, let's get into it. We're gonna we're gonna predict our playoff here or our our latest playoff model. Anyway, uh, we'll pull up we'll pull up our uh, we'll pull up our tier chart, which is streamlined. It gets it's getting more and more streamlined by the week as teams fall out of the playoff window. So, uh, Kyle, let's get right into it. Um, what game? Where you want to start in the Big Ten? That's what we normally do, right? Yep, let's start in the Big Ten here. So. Let's start with Wisconsin beats Rutgers. No surprise there. Michigan beats Indiana. No surprise there. Hey, look, um, there's tacos. Ooh, there is tacos there. <laughs> <laughs> tacos from the Mad Canadian there. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm, I'm pulling you up here real quick, Jared. Uh, let's see. Do we want to rank Wisconsin at all? They're, they're, they're finally, finally, finally finding their groove. Is it time to How many put losses Wisconsin they have? back on the track? I believe they have three. I believe they have three right now. Uh, three three losses don't get you on the chart. Sorry. Okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, so Michigan. Michigan uh, convincing win against Indiana, 29-7. to seven. They have one loss. Do they remain in the B tier, or do you think they need to slide up a little bit? Uh, let's see. They lost to Michigan State, so uh, that's that's not great uh, because Michigan State just lost. But um, I don't know, Kyle. What do you think? Do you... We don't have a limit. We don't have a limit on how many teams get to be in A tier. There has to be mm-hmm. four teams in S tier, but that's it as far as our numerical limiting goes. So do you want to move them up? I'm leaving it up to you. Well, I'm going to leave it up to chat here. Actually, do we do we move up? Do we move up Michigan to the A tier, or do they belong in the B there? 
Uh, Nomad says A. <laughs> Zach says no. <laughs> so that's not going to help us, Jared. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of going on. They are they are a legit team. They are. I mean, they had a close loss to Michigan State at their place. I think for I think for this week, I, I think we could probably move them up to A as we'll probably move at least one. We'll move well, a couple of teams down some too. Teams down. We're gonna be moving some teams down. <laughs> All right. Um, also in the Big Ten here, just to kind of fin- finish it up here, Penn State takes care of business of Maryland, thirty-one to fourteen. Iowa close battle with Northwestern, seventeen to twelve. And then our and then our chaos ones, if you'll call this one chaos, Illinois beating Minnesota fourteen to six. I mean, Ugh. it affects the Big Ten, but it doesn't affect the national landscape. Mm-hmm. So no, uh, yeah, Minnesota no longer counts as chaos. Yeah, but this one does. Purdue, yes, Purdue over Sparty forty to twenty nine. As as we've mentioned before, Jared, don't play in West Lafayette in the no. dark. No, don't don't play Purdue. Period. I I highly recommend never playing Purdue. Um, yeah, which is unfortunate for Ohio State this upcoming weekend. But yeah, I was I, never... I was telling our I was telling our um our friends in our Discord here that Michigan State needs to get up big before it gets dark, or yeah. of course they're in trouble. And you know what? Nope, they got in trouble. Could we play them twice? I mean, it's certainly possible. We could play Purdue twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. They're a three-loss team. Um, Kyle, do you, do you have Purdue schedule ahead? I, I forget. How many of those are conference losses? Let me pull it up real quick here. Let's see. Purdue is currently six and three. They have one loss out of schedule, and that was against Notre Dame. Okay, so they have two losses within the big 10, which what has to put them. They're current. They're currently. Yeah, currently well, if you're, if you're, is that tied with Wisconsin right now, you have three teams who are six and three, four and two in the big 10, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Purdue. I was also four and two. Actually, I was seven and two and four. Two, so you got four teams right now. It's four and two in the big 10 West. So yeah, we we definitely could. Like who who the hell knows what's happening in the Big Ten West right now? I'm not even gonna try and figure out the the four way drama of the Big Ten West uh without without preparing for it pre episode. So we're just gonna let that one go for now. Well, honestly, I think this is Wisconsin's really to to who lose know? because who knows? Okay. It's a it's a cluster. It's a cluster and a half. All right. so it's three Sparty. clusters. It's at least three so Sp- clusters. So Sparty can no longer be in the S tier, Jared. No, no, we're 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 bumping Sparty out of the S tier. They are no longer in, in my opinion. I think I think they're still a solid team. I, I think you move them down to the A tier for right now. Yeah. But do you move do you move Purdue up? No, they have three losses. Are we there there are no three loss teams on this chart. Period. All right, we'll, we'll we'll get to that on the right? other teams. Then. We don't have any three loss teams on this chart currently, right? We'll find out. We don't. Well, I mean, I yeah, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there, but because <laughs> I think we do have uh, at least one who is a three loss team now potentially, but uh, we'll we'll get there. All right. Let's yes, see here. that's that's where we're that's where we're going. That's where we're going. That's where we're going, Hoosier. All right, I'm so we'll get there. I'm just going. I'm just going to go down the list here, Jared, of what I see. So Pittsburgh beats Duke, fifty-four to twenty-nine. They are a two-loss team. I think they still stay in the C tier. Yeah, that's just holding on for dear life. All right, Georgia. Georgia beat Missouri forty-three to six. They stay exactly where they should be. Uh, Alabama. Alabama, where is their game at? Close game to unranked below 500 LSU team. It was not a great 14, showing. 20 to 14. And this is LSU, This is a very 
broken LSU team. They're Very. out so many, so many players on defense. They are out with like their their top two, even three corners. They're out with a lot of their talent on their defensive line, and yet Alabama came up with a six point victory. Guys, Alabama is not as almighty as you you believe it to be. This is not. This is yeah. This is not. Um, this is not. Alabama of the past few years. This is a very beatable, very human Alabama. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Cincinnati, since uh, another team not having a great showing here, Cincinnati holds out a victory against Tulsa 28 to 20. Cincinnati had this game won. They were in victory formation and fumbled the ball. How do you fumble the ball out of victory formation? You, we we can't put them we can't put them in the S tier based off of this game alone, Kyle. This is and like I forgave them. They had a rough game against Navy last week, but I forgive them for that. I've seen Navy make some really good teams look real sloppy. It happens, but to struggle to be a fumbled ball away from going to overtime potentially with. With Tulsa? No. I'm sorry, but no, that's mm -hmm. they're they're not getting that fourth spot. We have a spot open. We drop Michigan State. Yep. It is not going I, to Cincinnati. I I agree. Yeah. And, and this is why coaches less than a yard, will, no man. This is why coaches will call timeout when a team is in victory formation. You just never know. Yeah, you just never know. All right, so I'm just going down the list here. All right. Wake Forest. Here, here, here is another chaos happening here. North Carolina upsets Wake Forest fifty-eight to fifty-five. But yeah. this was not to be be really confusing, Jared. This was not considered a in-conference game as scheduling things happen, and this wasn't a scheduled in-conference game in. I don't, I don't know. know. It, it's the ACC. Yeah. So Wake Forest still undefeated in the ACC still, but has a one loss to their to their name. No. No, I, I see we have them in the A tier here. So a really talented offense um, team in Wake Forest. Should they still remain in, in the A tier? No. Absolutely not. They, they fall to the B tier. Hell, I almost want to drop them down to the C. I really actually, actually almost want to drop them down to the C tier. Uh, I would do well, that before I left them in A. But the fact that it wasn't a conference game really actually helps keep them at least in beer. Beer? You know where beer? my mind's at. In B, <laughs> um, as they are still like pretty easy. Well, not easy. Well, they, they beat. They've beat North Carolina State already, right? Is that correct? Oh, uh, Wake Forest? Yeah. No, they play them this weekend. Oh, okay. And, and, I, and I'll say Wake okay. Forest, their, their final three games, heck, Wake Forest, dare I say, could, could end the season with four straight losses. They have a loss to UNC. They could lose next weekend to NC State, then Clemson, then Boston College. Kyle, are you telling me that Clemson could still win the Atlantic Division? They only have two conference losses. Are you telling me Clemson could still win their 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 division and potentially the conference? Um, there are two NC games. State, NC NC State does have the advantage. Uh, I'm just looking at their their schedules here. Because uh, you're NC telling State me does, that Wake Forest NC could State lose does three more games. Mm-hmm. One of those games to Clemson. Mm -hmm. Clemson's only two games behind. Yeah, but now NC State, you still have NC, NC State NC sitting State's, there. Yep, NC State is one game behind. So if NC State beats Wake Forest, they have that tiebreaker there. So and NC State did beat Clemson, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it feels like NC State's kind of in in control here, despite not being in first place. Based off of Kyle's assessment that, that he believes NC State will beat Wake Forest. So we'll see. We will see. Uh, it, would, it would behoove Clemson that Wake Forest wins that game because they, are, because they would have the tiebreaker 
loss to North Carolina State, but have but they still have an opportunity to have the tie breaking win over Wake Forest. Kyle, I kind of want to see it happen. Just <laughs> just the chaos in me kind of wants to see Clemson, this really terrible Clemson team, somehow still win the ACC, discrediting the entire league. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, before we get into more chaos, Jared, I think this is a good point to to stop in here from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company, Kyle. Let's throw the coffees up on the screen here. How about that? We're going to throw the coffees up on the screen. All right, what do we got here? We have, look at all these beautiful coffees. These are all of the coffees. Uh, first, we have uh, some regular roast coffees. This is the Fierce, which is a highly caffeinated dark roast. Uh, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, the Ride or Die, and the Cast Iron are your uh, three of your medium roasts that are excellent. Uh, but don't forget about the Loki, which is a light medium roast, or the Thor, which is a medium dark roast. So we're going to work through some of our medium roast coffees here. Uh, you also have the Rocco. The Rocco is available both in a medium and a dark roast, so you get your coffee there. Both of those are Ethiopian coffees. Um, wet processed uh, Ethiopian coffees, they are excellent. Let's go to the next page. Here we have, uh, Kyle, some of our flavored coffees. Look at that. That, went, that white chocolate peppermint, that seasonal darling, is back in stock. Then we have our cereal killer coffees. Guys, I, I hate to break it to you. The cinnamon roll still out of stock. You're going to want to check the website frequently to see if that cinnamon roll comes back into stock or not. Uh, <laughs> uh, you sold me on cereal killer. The cereal killer. The cereal killer is uh, that is a vanilla buttercream. That is a vanilla vanilla buttercream. So you can uh, check out all these coffees for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. Hey, Nomad, did you see that the barrel-aged Raging Tiger is back in stock? If not, it is. That's another one that's been out of stock for a while, and it's now back in stock. Uh, you can uh, find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Barbecue Company mentioned where they were going to be this um, at the top of the show. Let me give you um, some, uh, some reviews left by actual customers who had some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, we got one here saying the best food truck around, hands down. Barbecue is smoked right there on location and is always fresh that day. Brisket and pork is never dry, always full of flavors that melt in your mouth. The sides are, are also made that day and are absolutely phenomenal. The owner and crew are top-notch and are very friendly. I highly recommend giving them a try. Got another one here that says, I tried their food today for the first time. Really glad I did. Sliced brisket sandwich was one of the best I've had in Ohio. Pulled pork was really good as well. Can't wait to return and try more of their food. Be, be, be the next customer that can write this great, these great reviews. When you have the Mad Canadian, when you've had a selection of food from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, be sure to check out his social medias, Facebook and Twitter, to find out where him and his food truck are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle, let's let's jump back into it. We still have a lot. Kyle, we had a lot of near chaos misses this week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was. A, I got you know, it was the, the funny thing is, and I think I'm ripping off a Tom or tweet here when I say this. But like you, at, at about three thirty, everyone was like, oh, man, Ohio State didn't look too good. Are they going to drop in the playoff rankings? And then by the end of the day, it was like, oh, man, Ohio State has an opportunity to go up in the playoff rankings because outside of Georgia, who looked great and will be remaining in the first spot in our S tiers. I think that goes without saying Georgia looked great. Um, everyone else in the top 10, I think everyone else in the top 10 real, real struggles. Yeah. Real struggles. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm trying to just get back into my thing here. All right. Uh, Ole Miss. We have Ole Miss, right? Yes, we do. Ole Miss. Not not big victory over Liberty, and Liberty's not a good team here. They beat Liberty twenty seven to fourteen. 
I know, yeah. I know, I know that Ole Miss is a two loss team, but man, I, I just think they're just fake good. I think they're fake good. I think they're like a fine team. Uh, that's it. They're just fine. It's, it's okay. whatever. I think I'm perfectly comfortable with them in the C tier. I don't think they are ever going to get out of that C tier. I think they live in that C tier for the rest of this regular season. But until they lose, I think they probably stay there. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to drop them out until they lose and they might, they probably will, but um, All right, fair for enough. now we leave them. All right. Fair enough. All right. Let's see. Cover that game. I want Oklahoma state with a 24 to three victory over West Virginia. Solid win. I think solid win. They're a solid B team. Uh, Baylor. Here, here's here's a, here's another uh, chaos game, Jared. Baylor with a thirty to twenty eight loss to TCU, who was without their coach in that game. Well, wow. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> uh, they have their their new coach. Uh, yes. Yeah, the uh, the Baylor's the Baylor Bears. Uh, they fall. They fall to Team Chaos. Uh, this is loss number two for them. They drop at least to C because of the second loss. Um, do we keep them in C, or do they deserve to drop all the way out? Well, let's let's look at their schedule here. Let's see, they have a Who's loss their best to win? O- Iowa State, <sighs> BYU, in Texas. Uh, I mean. Okay, yeah, I mean we we can keep them in C. I mean, I mean B, B, BYU is ranked, so I, I guess yeah, keep them in C. That's fine. Yeah, that's 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 fine. We'll keep them in C. Texas A and M and Auburn. Uh, Auburn. I was expecting a little bit more from Auburn in this game, but are man, you? Not not uh, more than three points. That's fair. More than three points. That's, that's fair. <laughs> this this was a Bo Nix. Listen, Bo Nix uh, can be your savior, and he can also uh, be your killer. Uh, and and he uh, he he killed Auburn this game. He's uh, he yeah. is who we thought he was. Yeah. So That's, Auburn, Jared, that is loss number three for Auburn. We hardly knew ye. Get off my chart. You know what? Right, I t- I even me- I even messed up their aspect ratio, and I don't care. Look at that. They're all squeezed now. So, do you move Texas A&M up to B now? Here, here's a team who beat uh, Alabama earlier in the year. They have two losses. Granted, their losses aren't that, aren't that great. They lost to Arkansas by double digits, and they lost yeah. to Mississippi State. Yeah. Um, do you keep them at C, or do you move them up to B? I say we, this, that, this they is, have two... They have two losses, and we don't currently have any two loss teams above C. And I don't, I and I get that he's, I get that the Texas A and M beat Bama and everything, but do they really deserve to be that big of an exception to the rule? Do they deserve to be the one two loss team ranked above a C? Mm-hmm. No, that wasn't that, that that wasn't a rhetorical question. I am asking you. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably not. I understand understand that they do have that victory over Alabama, but but losses do play a factor as well, too. Yeah, but LSU also almost had a victory over Alabama, so. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Notre Dame struggled early on, but took care of business the, the rest it's of the Navy. way there. 34-6, so... Notre Dame stays where, where they need to be at the B tier. I'm comfortable uh, with that. Uh, let's see here. I don't think we have NC State ranked here, Jared. No, no, we do not. Should we? Uh, I, I think so. It's a two loss team. I think I think they can move up to the C tier here. It's it's a team that could win their division. I mean, they're they're they have a chance. They have one loss in their in their division. If they beat Wake Forest, they're in the driver's seat. So right. I, I'd say move them to C for now. I mean, it, it, it's okay. You caught. It's fine. I don't want to spend any more time on it. It's fine. <laughs> Mississippi State. Do we have Mississippi State on here? No. Fuck. Yep. 
Okay. I, All right. Good. I, I almost said it. Try and do that <laughs> a little right. bit less. No. And they are and not do we have getting K- put on. Do we have a K- and do we have a Kentucky on here? Uh, we do until we talk about it and we kick them the hell off. <laughs> yeah, they lost to Tennessee, forty-five to forty-two. So Kentucky and that's loss number you, three. Yes. I believe it is. Get off my chart. Kentucky is may, off the chart. May we never speak of Kentucky ever again. And Fresno State is not on here either, but they lost to Boise State at 40 to 14 in this game. I, that's fine. All right. And <laughs> um, San Diego State. Is San Diego State on here, Jared? No. No. Okay. I do not have San Diego. Listen. With all due respect to San Diego State, I don't care. Okay. Um, all right, and the last game here, Oregon. Oregon beat Washington twenty-six to sixteen. What do you make what do you make of that game? Uh was not Oregon at their best, that's for sure. Um I still think that they're a really good team, and quite frankly. They're the team who I think we should be moving up into the S tier. Um, I, I I think, yeah, I, I think I think they're our fourth S tier team. And quite frankly, I think we should consider sliding Ohio State down to four and putting Oregon right there at number three. They have the head to head. I think that's only fair. All right, I have a suggestion. Okay. Yes, Washington is bad. I agree with you. But and they could I, I, have looked better against Washington, but it was really a weekend where no one looked impressive other than like so, no, no one in the top 10 looked good. So let me ask you this, Jared. Yeah. I'm thinking of sliding Oregon over to number 2. To number 2. It's a, I'm thinking it's a big of move for them sliding Ohio State over one to um, number three. I was, I was already doing it. I was already doing it. Uh, you might as well it. keep them. I think you might as well keep sliding Oklahoma down to the A tier. And no. then move Alabama up to the A tier. No. Absolutely not. What did Bama do to deserve to get moved up by almost losing to a terrible LSU team? It Not so much what they did this this last week but i think just in general when i when you look at the when you look at the season as a whole and what they've done so far this season yeah they have one loss to a a ranked texas a&m team but oklahoma jared their wins that this is a team that could have easily have had three losses already this year and one of them Coming to Kansas and Kansas State as well. Oh, you know what? If and and Tulane. Com- and Tulane. You want to have that conversation? Is that what you want to do? Okay, but let's talk about moving Cincinnati up. I, I'd rather move Cincinnati up. Hell, I'd rather move Michigan State back up in. If that's the conversation you want to have... I'd, I'd rather put either Cincinnati or Michigan State into the top four instead of Bama. Okay, then, then taking my Homer hat off of here, then why why would we have Oklahoma behind Ohio State then? I think that because they are the go-away favorite to win the Big 12, I think they are undefeated, and I get that they've had some real close calls, and being undefeated is not the be-all, end-all, but they still play in a Power 5 conference. They play Power 5 teams every week, in and out, and I get that the Big 12 is a disaster this year. I, 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 I acknowledge this. It's a disaster of a conference this year. But they're still seem they they're still in the driver's seat to win the conference. It's a Power 5 conference. They're playing power five talent week in and week out. So should you move Oklahoma ahead of Ohio state though, because of what you just said? No, because Ohio state has better wins. I'm being undefeated is not the be all end all. But if we're still comparing and again, like 
you, you talk about bumping Oklahoma down, and I'm willing to have that conversation with you. I really am. I will move Oklahoma into the playoff spot. If that's or so, out of the playoff spot, if that's what you want to do, Kyle, I just don't want to replace them with Bama. I'd mm-hmm. rather put Cincinnati has a top 10 win against Notre Dame. Does Alabama have a top 10 win? Mm-hmm. Um, a top 10 win? No, they do not. Cincinnati does. Michigan State has a top 10 win. Does Alabama? Do. Nope. They have their best win is against, again, this is. I'm using AP rankings here, but 12th ranked Ole Miss. I'd rather move Cincinnati or Michigan State. If we're going to, if you are, if you are dead set, Kyle, on bumping Oklahoma out of our playoff spot, I'm willing to have the conversation with you, but it's, it would be to move Michigan State or Cincinnati in, not to move Alabama in. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. They just look very beatable right now. They look incredibly yeah, so, beatable right now. That so, being so, said, does, so does Cincinnati. So does Michigan everybody, just everybody, lost. everybody who's not Georgia looks beatable. Right. So who do we have in our top four? We have number one offense in the country, Ohio state. We have Oregon who inarguably has the best win of anyone. The win, uh, Michigan State has maybe the second best win of anyone. Well, cur- currently that's Cincinnati because Notre Dame, according to the AP, is seventh. I, and then Sparty is eighth. But where's Ohio State? Uh, sixth. So that Oregon has the best win. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so that's why Oregon. Ohio State is in there because of how dominant they've looked at times because of they, they they have better wins. The big 10 is a solid conference this year. They have a really nice win against a Penn state team who I understand is not ranked, who we all know is actually very good when Clifford's at full health. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm fine with how this is then. I'm fine with how this is Georgia one, Oklahoma two, Ohio state three and Oklahoma four. And then maybe you could slide Cincinnati up to that fifth spot there ahead of Alabama. Because of, because oh, of discussion. We're not ranking, because of, I, I don't want to rank them within the A tier. We can we can rank within the top four, but we, we, we don't No. I I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna do a full top eight. So are you happy with what you're seeing right now? Any conversations potentially about moving Notre Dame up into the A tier? Um did we yeah, yeah. We, I, I, I guess you could you could move Notre Dame up in the A tier. Honestly, they, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need something better than I guess. Sure, <laughs> I get that is better than I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. We can move Notre Dame up. Um, I'm not. I don't want to move Oklahoma State up. Uh, Wake Forest. Yep. We just bumped down, and I think I'm okay with. With everything else as it currently sits, Man, that that B that B tier is very thin. But but who who would you put there at the B tier? Well, that's a, you, no. You have to have one loss. Like that that is a place where one loss teams go. But what about UTSA? Yeah, but they don't. They play a crap schedule. I mean, who's their best win? Who's UTSA's best win? Hey, Austin, you shut um, up. Are Illinois? you even in here? UT, UTSA's best win is Illinois, Jared. So their best wins, <laughs> their best wins, Illinois. You want to move them up to B? No, I was just, I was just asking the question. I'm not saying you should. All and right. Then you have, and then you have one, and then you have one lost Coastal Carolina. Who again? What? Austin, I, I don't have I don't have patience for you right now. The <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with this here, so okay. Austin. Since you joined late here, what do you think of these rankings here? So the S tiers are actual one through four, and then ranked all these order. others ranked in order, and then A, B, and C is our tier list for teams with two or fewer losses. 
Now we got Buckeye Zach chatting. I think Kyle. I think um, we're good there. So, while while yeah, they well, while while they yes. do while while they get some answers back to us, let's let's uh, what do we have in the Ask Sloopcast mailbag? So, Nomad says, "Will the national media ever wake up to the SEC bias?" They are kind the of, SEC bias. Yeah, I think I think we kind of answered that a little bit. We we looked at Alabama. We had a Alabama. long argument, Austin, about OU in the top four. Yeah, we we t- we talked about Alabama. Who do you and replace their ske- them with? Alabama and their schedule of like what's their best win, and and any of the other teams that's in the SEC that's not Georgia. No. Not all that great. Not all that great. Yeah, uh, I think SEC is kind of a one-team conference right now. And that's not to say Bama isn't very good, because Bama's very good. But they aren't yes. the Bama we're used to seeing. And by the way, Kyle, uh, Austin says if we're going to replace OU with anyone, it should be Cincinnati. So, Austin, you have an apology to make, because you're on Team Jared, whether you know it or not. Because we just had a lot of, long argument about this, and you're on Team Jared now, buddy. Welcome to the good guys. Well, to be fair, I, I wanted Oklahoma off, but in replace, I was going to say Alabama, but. Yeah. And I said, if we were going to replace them, I wanted it to be with Cincinnati or maybe Michigan State and not Alabama. <laughs> was we'll that a, this next is week. that a sponsored well, comment, Austin? Did you just get a nickel for that? We'll, 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 we'll revisit this next week, Jared. We'll, revisit uh, well chaos, week. chaos will happen as it yeah. always happens. Right. One more, one more question. One, one more question from Nomad here. Uh, does a shitty nine and three Wisconsin make it to the big 10 championship? Yes. Yes, they absolutely can. They can. Will they? I don't know. Like we, we've are we already addressed this once this episode, like, the Big Ten West is is totally up for grabs right now between four teams, Kyle. Did we say four teams? Purdue, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Any one of those four teams can win it. And I, I do not feel like spending the podcast time trying to decipher that. I don't think anyone wants to hear it. Not, not, a, not anyone listening to an Ohio State podcast. I don't think they want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, um. Well, Wisconsin did beat Purdue, so they got that head-to-head there. Kyle, I just said I don't want to spend time on it. Because, <laughs> Siri, you want to start breaking down head-to-heads in a four-way tie? Is that what you want to do right now? Not really, as we're at the 38th minute <laughs> yeah, mark here. thank so. you. <laughs> Austin, I, Kyle wanted to bump Oklahoma out of the top four, and I was all for it. It, my objection to what he was saying was that we would put Bama in to replace Oklahoma. And I said, we can bump Oklahoma out if you want to. But it has to be with Cincinnati or maybe Michigan State, but not Alabama. All right, fine. And we fought about it. We fought for a long time about it to the point where we just walked away from it. Fine. Pull the trigger. All right. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger. We're doing it. It's happening. It's happened. It's happened. We just needed Austin to be our tiebreaker. Um, move them. Okay. I, we're well, we not were, we were, ordering yeah, within A yeah. tier. We're not. <laughs> we're not doing All right. that. All right. A tier is A tier. They aren't ordered in A tier. All right. All right. Let's let's end it right there, Jared. So our final four for <laughs> today's episode here: Georgia, yeah. Oklahoma, or. Georgia, Oregon, that's the right O team, Ohio State, Cincinnati, the state of Ohio, well represented yes, in sir. the top four. Lots of O's in there. Cincinnati, Ohio, Ohio State, and of course, Oregon. Georgia, you can go to hell. Uh, yeah. Uh, our, and then our next four are in no particular order, Kyle. Alabama, Oklahoma, Michigan, Michigan State, and Notre Dame. I'm good with that. Yep. Uh, and there's so we have so much chaos coming. We have so much chaos coming, so it's all good. Yeah, and right. he left. And he left Buckeye Zach. All right, all right Jared. Uh, that, that is that's it. it. That's all that's all we have here. So uh I think when I saw I think I saw Ohio State was a nineteen 
point favorite over Purdue. Yeah. Uh, that's that's where it opened. We'll see where CBS ends up marking it when they lock it in and what it'll be for our slip picks. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not feeling good about that number right now. Um, Purdue scares the hell out of me. And I mm-hmm. understand that's uh, some PTSD <laughs> potentially. And I understand that maybe that's, um, you know, I feel the fact that it's a, the fact that it's not in West Lafayette helps. <laughs> it mm-hmm. really helps. And the fact that, it at least won't be dark for the first half helps. Um, but yeah, I, I have some severe uh, flashback issues with Purdue yep. and having seen the Purdue super weapon go off twice already this year. It's uh you y- y'all y'all turn in for our Thursday episode to hear our, our extended thoughts on this. Yeah. I mean, I mean the good, the good thing about this though, Jared, it's, it's in Columbus. Yes. All right, Kyle, uh, that's it for today's episode. Uh, I want everyone to check out our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Come hang out with us. Uh, We recently streamlined the channels a bit to make it a little less intimidating for new people. So maybe if you signed up for it, but then you never really talked much, now's a good opportunity to come in. We've, we've, We've brought the channels down a bit. Uh, made some broad, made the topics a little bit broader, maybe a little bit easier to navigate. So uh, come hang out with us, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, you can access the premium channels of with most of it's free. The vast majority of it's free, but you can uh, access our premium channels at uh, by by contributing to our Patreon, uh, which is patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, Three dollars get you access to everything. It allows you to access this live chat where we're talking to Austin and Zach and Nomad and so many people. Um, during the episode, you get to watch us and talk to us live while we do it. Uh, and again, all of the all of the digital content we talk about is all just like three dollars a month. That's all it is. And you can pay. And if you're like, oh, I don't like monthly payments, I totally get that. You can actually save money. I want to say maybe it's like 10 or 12% or something like that by signing up for the entire year at once. So you can save a few bucks doing that uh, over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. And if you want to help uh, drive the future direction of the show, one of the reasons why we pared down our channels in the Discord server was because of feedback we received on our survey at survey.thesloopcast.com. People were like, "Ah, I just wish the server was maybe a little bit easier to navigate and there were fewer channels with broader topics. You know what? We got you. So that, but the survey is already having a real life effect on, on how we do things. So uh, go to survey.thesloopcast.com. You don't have to provide an email address. You don't need to create an account. The entire process will take you about five minutes. Not not just the survey. The entire process will take you maybe slightly over five minutes. It's only 10 questions. And again, you don't need to create an account or sign in or do anything like that. So survey.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I want to give a shout out to former Buckeye great Jonathan Cooper. Got his first sack and second sack this Sunday against the Cowboys. That would be defensive end Jonathan Cooper. <laughs> yes, defensive end. Kind kind of looked like a little little Von Bell, back there. With um with uh, Broncos no longer having him, he kind of kind of looked like him a little bit there. So glad to see him, um, shining, with the Broncos now. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> did I say Von Bell? <laughs> you did. Mm. Um. Uh, I don't Von know. Miller. I meant Von Miller. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I wasn't sure what you meant, so I was just going to let you, I was just going to let you have it. I was just going to let you go. All right. All right. T- take it out here, Jared. I, I, I need a, I need to stop. So end, end this out here, Jared. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a, uh, a Columbus based punk band. They are called Parade Rainer. Uh, so you can stick around if you're listening to the audio version of this. Um, <laughs> Austin, Austin, why are you so mean to me, Austin? We've been friends for so long. Why are you so mean? Uh, you can listen to Parade Rainer if you're listening to the audio version of this. 
Uh, you can just just keep listening. You don't have to do anything. Uh, Parade Rainer is about to be delivered to your ears. And if you <coughs> excuse me, and uh, if you're listening to the YouTube version of this, you can click on the link down below. Wow, Austin, just going to double down on being a hater, huh? Whew. Ouch. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Parade Rainer. Mm-hmm.